These are the Solar Bear High Shine Tassel Loafers, and they're quite unlike anything else I have ever worn. So why did I, a person who wears boots and sneakers, pick a pair of loafers, and why these loafers in particular? First, let's talk history a little bit. I'm gonna keep this pretty high level. There are plenty of YouTube videos if you really wanna dive into this, but Solovair's whole thing is based off of making these souls with air. Solovair, soul of air. These souls were popularized by Doc Martin, and Solovair actually used to make Doc Martens when they were still made in England. You know, after time, Doc Martin took their whole thing overseas, but Solovair was still doing it and still doing it in the same way that they did right at the start. So history aside, and it's cool that they're still being made in England, there are a few key reasons why I decided to pick these Solovairs instead of something like the Doc Martin Adrians. First, a big functional difference is actually in the bottom of the shoes and is pretty tied to that idea of the soul of air. Now, I love my weird Doc Martens. I think they're super, super fun, but they honestly kind of suck to walk around in. And, and a big part of that is because of what's in the soul. You see, with the Docs, whenever I walk around, I start feeling a lot of pain around my arches, and that's because they don't have a shank at all. Whereas the Solar Bears, the Solar Bears have this wooden piece inside of it. Looking at the bottom here between the two, you can actually see the little wooden piece that makes these loafers much more supportive. So for a kind of slip on dress shoes, they're closer to what I want out of a pair of boots. Second is repairability. Now, it's not like the Solovairs have super high quality leather. It has this big shine on it, which means it's very, very treated. And that's not very different from Doc Martens. But what's really important is that Solovairs are actually a lot easier to repair on the soles. See, no matter what you wear, whether it's sneakers or boots, the thing that's gonna wear out first is gonna be the bottoms, the part that you're walking around on. Solovair makes it a lot easier to repair your soles. They sell them on their website and it's easy to take to a cobbler and get them redone because they're not glued together in the way the Doc Martens are. You know, I'm someone who tries to prioritize longevity and repairability in their clothes. It's why I like leather, it's why I like denim. It's stuff that will last me for a long time. So to see that Solovair makes the attempt and makes it easy to access different parts and to fix your shoes, I think that's great. And that's really, really important. And it was a big factor in my buying decision. Now, I wanna take a moment to talk about break-in, which I think is kind of a funny concept in this like genre of clothing. You know, there's this thing where the nicer the piece of clothing is, the more you kind of have to work you kind of have to earn being able to wear it. I talked about this with my Red Wing 1907s. They gave me such a gnarly blister the first day I wore them, but it's something that I kind of had to fight through to get them to be as comfortable as they are now and to feel like they're something that I want to wear on a daily basis. I think it's funny to think about how it's almost a sign of quality that uh, clothing is hard to wear at first go, that you really have to earn it. And honestly, this kind of break-in is a big reason why I went with the Solovers over the Adrians. I saw plenty of videos talking about how hard and difficult the Adrians were to break in over a long period of time, whereas the Solovair seemed a little bit easier, at least for me. These haven't been bad at all right out of the box. I think, you know, with the nature of this high shine leather, it's gonna be pretty stiff. For me, the biggest pressure point is right here on the tongue. I feel it pressing into the top of my foot, but I think that's also because it's folded over. It's still, again, very stiff. Um, gonna need a shoehorn to put this on pretty much all the time, but that's also to just keep the heel um, from getting too bent. But so far, you know, I've been able to walk around. I've done a couple of miles in these, and they haven't given me blisters, which I think is a big plus, and over time, these should soften up and become really, really comfortable and easy to slip on. Finally, let's just go over how they look. I'm someone who's a pretty casual dresser. I like my sneakers, I like my workwear, I don't really like having to wear elevated pieces, I'm not that big into tailoring or suiting or anything like that but I have been trying to incorporate a little bit more of that into my wardrobe all the same. 
you know, I kind of like this idea of doing like a high-low thing where I have my denim up top and my more casual workwear, but also still having something a little nicer on the bottom, whether it's pleated pants or, in this case, these loafers. I like how well they pair with jeans and a denim jacket, whether they're my Wranglers or my Naked and Famouses. I also like that they pair nicely with dress pants and a nice sweater. There's a versatility to this that I think comes from the sole. It allows it to walk between casual and dressy without it being too flashy, like the ones with like a little thingy up top, but it's also not as dress focused and very slim like a traditional penny loafer is. So that's a quick little rundown of why I think these loafers are such a great choice for someone who's new to this kind of footwear and you know it's trying to step out of their comfort zone a little bit but i also think they're great if you're a seasoned loafer wearer i suppose i definitely think that this is something i'll be wearing into the winter and into the spring i'll be kind of curious to see if i'm able to make this work during the summer not sure how these would look with shorts but you know it'll be fun to at least try out and see what happens so if you like this video, I would always appreciate you doing the YouTube thing of a like, a comment, and a subscribe. That always really helps my channel, and especially as I'm starting to grow it in this very early stage. I'd also be interested in what y'all want to see out of me. Um, if you guys have any ideas of things I should check out or topics I should cover, please do leave all of that below. I'm super open to trying new things. Otherwise, you can follow me on Instagram if you want to see what I'm doing more on a day today. I'm really excited to see what 2024 is going to bring, and I'm super appreciative of every single one of you who takes the time to watch these videos. So until the next time, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon, and I hope you have a great one.